Breaking news from Major League Baseball where Shohei Otani is signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers. The two-way superstar will get a 10-year deal worth $700 million, far and away the largest contract in the history of North American sports. The 29-year-old is coming off his second career MVP award when he led the American League in home runs, slugging percentage, and on-base percentage. He also went 10-5 and with a 3.14 ERA across 23 starts. Everybody's been keeping it quiet. Nobody's been able to talk about whether they've met with Shohei or not, although the Dodgers kind of did. But Shohei made the announcement official on Instagram, posting that he is going to L.A. And to all Dodgers fans, hey, I pledge to always do what's best for the team and always continue to give it my all to be the best version of myself. It's a long message. You can check it out on Instagram. For now, let's talk about this with our MLB insider, Jim Bowden, who's been following this the whole way through. Jim, $700 million. That's just what I'm going to post you, your reaction to this monster deal. Yeah, I never thought it would get to 700 million. Look, I thought all along I was being told it would get between 500 and 600 million. I was told during the winter meetings that two teams were in that range. Um, and it wasn't going to shock me if it got close to 600, but I am shocked it got to 700 million over 10 years. I mean, that's a $70 million AAV. We've never seen anything close to that in Major League Baseball. And this is the biggest free agent signing that sports has seen since LeBron James took his talents to South Beach. But for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Jeremy, they've been preparing to do that this over the last couple of years. Remember, they let Corey Seager go in free agency. They let Trey Turner go in free agency. They made sure to get under the luxury tax for a couple years in a row because they were always planning to make it run at Shohei Otani, who is the best player maybe in baseball history because he's a two-way player. Um, they were not shy away from the elbow surgery, which will not allow him to pitch in 2024. But they do believe he'll be back on the mound in 2025. Dr. Neil Elitrosh, who did the surgery, consulted with the Dodgers and with Shohei. Uh, he's very optimistic that he will be able to come back and pitch at his accustomed level in 2025. And I talked to Dave Roberts, the manager of the Dodgers. I asked him about the risk of Roberts, the risk of the elbow for this kind of money. And uh, this was in Nashville this past week. And look, Dave said to me, that the Dodgers and he believe betting on people is the best way to go when it comes to players coming back from injury. And he said there is no way you could bet on a better person than Otani. No one takes care of his body more. No one cares about the sleep. No one cares about what he puts in his body. No one cares about the exercising and conditioning more than Shohei. So they're betting on the person here and they're betting at a, at a number that Major League Sports has really never seen before. Jim, we had all kinds of speculation yesterday. We were tracking planes and cameras parked at airports. You said late in the day, hey, look, nothing is close. Everybody can just calm down a little bit. It's still going to take some time. But how much do you think maybe the threat of a deal somewhere else kind of influenced the Dodgers to get this moving? Yeah, you know, you never know what pushes the needle at the end. But uh, for an example, you know, I had to contact Andrew Friedman, the president of Dodgers yesterday, and I said, have you been told you're out? Because we had false reporting from media members uh, at different entities saying that he was on his way to Toronto. Uh, we, we had videos on the Internet saying here he is at the Toronto airport. And so, you know, I had contact Andrew and he said that he had not been informed. I contact the Giants. They said they had not been informed. And, and then later in the day, I ended up talking to Rep, uh, Nez Bolello from CAA. And he said, yeah, there's no truth to it. He's in Southern California. He's with me and he has not made his decision yet. Uh, now, did that maybe move the needle for the Dodgers? Did maybe they make their final offer just with the threat and the idea that maybe he's going to Toronto? Look, I'm not in the room and they're probably not going to tell us, but that might have pushed it over the top. Maybe at the end they gave their final offer because of it. Uh, but I got the sense yesterday that Toronto wasn't happening. Um, and then today, I think it's really cool the way Shohei decided to do it. He announced it himself. He didn't have to wait until it was leaked or someone else was able to do it. He was able to make his an announcement by himself on Instagram. And I think that is just first class. And I give a lot of credit to Nez Bolello from CAA because look, he handled this negotiation close to the vest. A lot of people didn't like it was more transparent, but they really held it in a professional manner. 
uh, until the media kind of screwed it up yesterday. But I'm glad we finally have conclusion because this will start the dominoes, Jeremy. Shohei Otani was holding up the rest of the free agent market, and now that he has signed, that's going to now have the domino effect now on all the rest of the free agents. So it should be a very, very busy week in Major League Baseball and here on CBS Sports HQ covering it. Yeah, Jim, you're going to be a busy guy over the course of the next week if all those dominoes do start to fall. Talking about Shohei's impact on the Dodgers here, Jim, what's the short-term impact? What's the long-term impact? Okay, short term is this offense is just going to be ridiculous, and obviously it will probably be the best in the National League. When you can put Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Shohei Otani, and Will Smith back to back to back to back in the lineup, uh, they are going to score some runs, aren't they? <laughs> and good luck trying to pitch around any of them. I mean, you know, if you look at Betts and Freeman's years last year, they were both uh, MVP caliber. If it weren't for Ron Lacuna, one of them would have won the MVP. Um, and so you add that to Otani, who's won an MVP of the American League two of the last three years unanimously. Yeah, this team is going to score a bunch of runs. So this team will go as far as the starting pitching takes it. Now, keep in mind, there's no Clayton Kershaw. A, he's a free agent, but B, he had shoulder surgery. and He's going to be out until late summer at best case scenario. Walker Bueller is trying to come back from Tommy John surgery. He had a hiccup at the end of the year. So we got to wait and see how that plays. And in fact, Dave Roberts, the manager of the Dodgers, told me that he probably won't be ready to start the season because they're going to take their time with him. You're not going to see Dustin May at the start of the year after his surgery. You're not going to see Tony Gonsolin at the start of the year because of his surgery. So outside of Bobby Miller, there's more questions than answers in the rotation. That being said, they won 100 games last year with a questionable rotation. I'm not going to bet against this team. I also don't think they're done making moves. I think they're out there and they're going to get more pitching. So we got to watch and see how that plays. But they are the Dodgers. And when Shari Otani was making his decision of where he wanted to go, winning was the number one factor. And the Dodgers' long history of winning played a huge factor. Then you check off the uh, geography box, the ownership box, the Andrew Friedman, Dave Roberts leadership box, their research and development department, and you know what? At the end of the day, the strong farm system that they can trade from, all of those pieces added together made it the best spot for Otani. I'm not surprised this is where he's finally landing. I thought all along this would be the best place for him. Yeah, Otani and the Dodgers agreeing to a 10-year, $700 million deal. It is the largest contract in North American sports. I think it might be the largest contract in world sports. I think Lionel Messi with Barcelona, yeah, 674. You see Messi's contract there. Cristiano Ronaldo was well on that list. And then you have Patrick Mahomes and a fellow major leaguer, uh, Mike Trout. Jim, we've seen big deals like this before. Long deals, 10-year contracts, lots of money. What are the chances in your mind that, that Otani sees out the entire decade of this contract? You know what, I think, I think, it, I think it'll work for him as a hitter. Um, I do. I, you know, I think when we watched Albert Pouls and Miguel Cabrera and Joey Votto, you know, they're never going to age perfectly. Uh, but we've seen guys hit into their 40s. David Ortiz comes to mind as a guy that hit into his 40s, at really at an MVP caliber level. Joey Otani is so ridiculously talented at the plate. And because his hit tool is an 80 hit tool on a scouting scale of 20 to 80, because he uses the whole field, because he's so athletic, because he takes care of his body, I do believe that he's got a chance to hit successfully for the entire 10 years of this contract. And although I can't kind of put my arms around 700 million yet, <laughs> um, I certainly think his talent tells me that it's a pretty good bet that he'll be able to age as well as anybody we've seen in baseball. Yeah, we were coming on here, Jim. The only thing Jim was saying was $700 million, $700 million. It is a lot of money. Jim, always appreciate your insight. You've been on top of this story from the get-go. We appreciate you joining us here on HQ. Breaking news, Shohei Otani signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers. It is a 10-year deal worth $700 million. It is the largest contract in sports history, topping Barcelona's deal for Lionel Messi. I'm not going to say way back when, but $674 million. Shohei getting his bag.